Susie here. Welcome to the Her Business Podcast, where we help women business owners and build the business of their dreams. And building a business of your dreams includes having a dream team. (laughs) I'm the host here at Her Business. I'm the CEO at the Her Business Company, and my name is Susie Daphnis. In today's episode, I am thrilled to have Christy Lee Billet, a real advocate for small businesses and the founder of People Powered HR as my guest. We're going to be talking about building a dream team for sustainable business growth. If I could go back and do anything again, I would have hired faster. And if you want to grow a sustainable, thriving business, you cannot do it on your own for very long. That would be a really great way to burn out. You need people and good people at that. People who buy into your vision and who take responsibility for their roles so that you can can step away from doing all the things to doing the things that you need to be doing to focus on growth and expansion. But how do you know what you should be doing and what the roles in your business should look like? That is our conversation today. And Crystal Lee is going to share her expertise on how to overcome some of the challenges of being the boss and how to deal with the fear and stress and anxiety that a team can bring. <laughs> so until you get the people part right in your business, it can feel really isolating and like you are carrying all the weight on your shoulders. Like I said, if I could do anything over again, I had have hired faster. And if you want to grow a six or seven figure business, it takes creating a team. You start off by the first person you hire, then you build what we call a micro business, a business with two to 15 staff. And if you want to grow beyond that, great, we can help you with that too. But it starts by getting the mentality that you need to bring people around you. In this interview, Christy Lee provides insights into her unique program, and she gives you really practical tips for looking at the roles in your business, knowing what role you should be doing as the business owner, and how to bring on other people to take on the other roles. So let's go to the interview. Hey, Christy Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, Susie, it's so great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited that you're here because I know that you recently spoke to our Her Business Network members about a topic just like this, sharing your expertise at helping women grow people-powered businesses that help them buy back their time, help them step into the leadership role. And I know that um, a lot of the women who listen to this show are also looking to grow. And you and I both know having a reliable team that's got your back is such an important part of that. So thank you for joining me. Thank you. I'm excited. So tell me um, what you believe to be the importance of actually having the right team for the different stages of our business growth. Mm, It's a great question. What I've discovered after working with so many businesses over the last 20 or so years is that you can't have a business that is both successful by however you want to measure success in your business, whatever metrics, as well as give you any sense of freedom without the right team. You can definitely have a successful business that's very profitable and makes you a lot of money, but that you have no freedom from on your own. But it means Mm. no nights to yourself, no weekends, no spending time with family, no travel. So in order to have a business that gives you both of those things, it's essential to have the right people around you and the right team around you. And obviously, as you grow your business, that starts to look a little bit differently. So no matter whether you are currently flying solo and it's just you or you've got 100 plus employees, having the right team is the only way to get that balance. And I don't think any of us get into business because Mm -hmm. we want to work 24-7 and think about nothing Mm -hmm. else, although that's Mm -hmm. often the trap we find ourselves in. So when we're just flying solo and on our own, of course, that means everything falls back to us. And until we can get that right team on board, that is always going to be the case. And then as we start to grow the team, we hit different growing pains points and and different pain points around which team members we need, when we need them, how many we need. And of course, that's the trap that I see a lot of business owners fall into. It's that starting to grow the team and then feeling very lost with that process and who they need and how to manage them and how to be a boss. And that's where I see a lot of people get stuck and either shrink back and, Mm. and just decide it's easier to do it all myself or just not be entirely sure how to move forward because they have to learn those boss skills. And then, of course, as your team grows, you can find yourself spending nights and weekends just thinking about your team and spending all of your days managing people. And so having the right team at that time is what enables you to grow. So wherever you're at with that growth of your team, there are different pain points you feel. Mm. But the truth remains, without the right team, you can't have both of those elements of a successful business. 
I really love that. And I know that if I could go back and start my business again, I would have hired faster, but I also would have been more strategic about, like you said, what are the right roles to have? Because I know for me, and I see this a lot in business owners, I started the first person I had was someone to take care of the phones and customer service. That's kind of the first thing I let go. And it was much later that I brought on some of the other roles, which, you know, in retrospect, I might have been a little more strategic about identifying the gaps in the team and really getting me my time to do the things that only I can do in the business and bringing on other people to do things that they can do much better than me, they're more qualified, or perhaps my time is more valuable as a business owner, developing my, as you said, my boss skills Mm. than it is to be doing some of those things. And so you said a number of important things there, but it is about the right team. And the right team when you're just starting out and it's just you and you're hiring your first virtual assistant is very different to the team that you're going to need when there's 5, 10 or 20 people on your team or when you have a 100, 200, 300, you know, $500,000 business. So mm. I want to talk about the gaps in their, in our teams. How do we go about identifying if we've even got the right people in the right roles or if we actually have gaps that are keeping us um, small? Yeah, it's really interesting. I see some common themes or pain points that point toward the fact that you do have a gap in your team. So some of the things to watch out for as a business owner is when you are the constant bottleneck in your Mm. business, and I found myself very guilty of this as I was growing my team, things would end up on my desk and then they'd get stuck there and nothing could move forward because everything was waiting on me. So the team Mm. that I had around me could get things to a certain point and then that gets stuck with me. That's a really common sign that you've got some gaps mm. because you become the bottleneck. Some of the other things that you'll see is you start to miss deadlines or not deliver to the level that you really want to, to your customers or your clients, or maybe you even need to start turning clients down. That's certainly mm-hmm. a sign. Sometimes as well, when we start with, as you said, maybe your first virtual assistant or an outsourcing arrangement, which is a great way to start growing your team, but over time that becomes complicated and you feel like you're losing control and you don't have enough sort of control over things, Mm -hmm. that's a sign certainly that you are have some gaps in-house. Also, when you are constantly putting out fires, and this is a real struggle point for a lot of business owners, it's just fix one problem, turn your time and attention to the next problem. (laughs) It's exhausting. uh, And that's certainly a sign as well. And I guess the other one is that you spend all your days managing people and then Mm. suddenly it's five o'clock and you're only just starting to get to your work that you need to do for the day. That's absolutely a sign. And and the common one that I hear about is I was up at 3 a.m. in the morning thinking about this staffing problem. (laughs) That's probably a sign that you've got a gap. (laughs) <laughs> and I don't know too many entrepreneurs who are real entrepreneurial types who thought, oh, I just want to manage people. That's what I want to do. No, <laughs> no one, right? No one. But as in no one, <laughs> right? And even, you know, if you if that is one of your strengths is if managing and motivating and inspiring people is your strength, then, you know, maybe this isn't a lesson for you, but for most of us, mm-hmm. we didn't get into business in order to manage people. And so how do we make sure that we are growing, that we don't shrink back? And go, oh, this is just too hard. I'm just going to do it myself because there is no sustainable way for it to be just you. There's just no way. And um, one of my mentors used to always say business is a team sport. And so if you're on the playing field, you are growing a business, then you want to make sure that you're not playing a solo game. You want to have the right people around you. Mm. You have an exercise that helps us identify gaps and Mm. start creating this wonderful team. You call it the clean slate exercise. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So this is an exercise that I developed just over years of working with business owners and seeing these similar pain points show up as they're growing teams. And at its core, the Clean Slate exercise is just a really simple but very powerful process to help you plan out your ideal team for your business now and for the future. Because the trap that I think we all fall into at various times in growing our businesses is that we tend to Frankenstein a team together. So (laughs) we do a little bit of outsourcing here, we get a specialist there, we plug a gap because it seems to be really screaming at us that it's a problem. 
And we often don't really think strategically, like you were saying earlier, about what's the best Mm -hmm. next role or what should this role look like. And because we're often doing things very quickly and with urgency, we don't stop and think about it. We just try to fix the problem. And we end up with this kind of Frankenstein team. And the structure, and that can work for a period of time to get us to that next level or to where we're going next. But quite often, the structure of the team that got us to where we are now is not the Mm -hmm. ideal structure to get us to where we want to go next. And so the clean slate exercise creates some space to help you do a little bit of strategic thinking about, actually, what's the ideal structure? If I could start this all again, because I think we also fall into the trap of thinking, well, this is what we've got now, so we have to work with it. But it's simply not the case. We can make a change. So it helps us to plan the ideal structure, not just the default structure or what we've seen our competitors do or what we've happened to create so far. I love that. Now, can you elaborate a little bit more on this concept of a clean slate and how it can help us identify gaps? Yeah, absolutely. Let me walk you through the steps of the process. And if you're listening, you can just follow these steps in your mind or take some time, take some pen and paper out and uh, work through it with us if you like. So, As I said, it's an opportunity to imagine and create your ideal structure, which means the first step is you have to forget about everything that you've got right now. Mm -hmm. And that is probably the most challenging thing that you have to do in this process because it it can be quite difficult to forget about our existing team Mm -hmm. and to not default to just recreating the current roles. So it's really important you just take some space to really forget about the current team. We will come back to them, don't you worry. But Mm -hmm. uh, For the first instance, you've got to pretend you've got no team, no specific roles, and this is an entirely clean slate. I love to do this on a big whiteboard. I've got clients that do this on big pieces of butcher's paper, whatever works best for you, but you need some clean sort of workroom to work with. Then step two, and this surprises people, is actually create your role as the business owner or the CEO of your business, whatever you call yourself, because you get to decide what Mm. your role looks like. So, Spend some time thinking about what you want your ideal role to be. And I find when people don't do this, they end up doing all the scraps that are left over. (laughs) And they often resent that, oddly enough. So um, create your role first, map out what you want to do in your business, and then map out all of your resourcing needs. What do you need to get done right now in order to fulfill on the customers that you're working with at the moment or to meet the goal that you want to meet this 12 months? And this is where it gets a little messy and you might want to come back to it, but you're basically chunking down all the things that need to get done in your business. Mm. So it might be customer service, it might be finances and accounts, uh, it could be marketing, social media, just brain dump all the things that need to get done in your business. And then you might group them together and put circles or color code them. Again, whatever works best for you. And then once you've done that, the next step is to bring back your current team. And I basically say you sort of map them over the top and see where they fit in this new structure that you've created. Mm. And there'll be some people that will slot straight into a role that you've identified that you need. You need one full-time customer service person. You happen to have one one full-time customer service person and they slot in beautifully. But there'll be other situations where you've got someone currently on your team who actually doesn't fit into this new structure. Mm -hmm. You can only use them in part. Or you suddenly see that you've got no one on your team that knows how to run your social media, Mm -hmm. yet you've identified that as something. And these are your surplus and gap situations. And that becomes your starting point to plan out what needs to happen next. Because, for example, you've got a huge gap in social media. Do you have someone that's not being fully utilised who could do that role? Mm. Or is that your next hire? So this helps you identify where you've got surplus people that are not being fully utilised and where you've got gaps of skills and resources on your team. And that's pretty much the step-by-step of how to do it. I love it. And you said it's simple, but it's so powerful because you talked about Frankensteining. And if we imagine a home where we keep tacking on rooms, we end up with a home. It's kind of functional, but you have to go down the corridor and then three doors to the left to find the bathroom. Whereas if you were designing it from scratch, you might have a far better pathway to everything that you need and everything is taken care of. Mm. Similarly with your team what you needed when you first started out might be different now that you have many more clients or you've gone from working 
from one to one to one to many people, or you've introduced a new revenue stream that has different requirements, or perhaps marketing has changed. If you've been in business as long as we have, yes. marketing <laughs> has changed, right? You probably didn't need someone to manage your social media 10, 15 years ago because it wasn't a thing. So, and here's what you might find. You might find that as you map across your new team members, you have one D gorgeous team member that you love and has been with you and faithful, that doesn't fit into the team. And that can be the hardest thing to confront. Mm. But ultimately, you know, like uh, you were saying is, well, you need to have the right people in the right seats on the bus. Otherwise, that bus is not going to be heading in any uh, direction that it needs to be going. And so if our main goals, Christy Lee, are profitability and productivity, Mm. um, obviously our role is really important. Mm. Is there any other way to prioritise the gaps which ones we address first if we're looking mostly for scalability, profitability, productivity? Yeah, absolutely. I think it it does depend where your business is at at that moment. But I think if you look at, if you've got a gap that is going to be immediately income producing, perhaps sales, customer service, Mm. that is a very quick gap that I would want to be filling because otherwise you do end up with a leaky bucket where clients start to fall away or things aren't as profitable. So if there is a gap that is going to be immediately income producing, that's a great gap to fill because it keeps everything else tracking. Another important gap is anything that is stopping you from being in the role you need to be to help drive the business forward. Mm. This is quite often basic tasks that you get caught up doing. Right. Bookkeeping is a classic that I see a lot of business owners right. spending time on when they really shouldn't be because it's not their big area of skill and it takes time and it's really important. So those kind of things that are holding you back from where you need to be usually are one of the top priorities that you would want to be focusing on as well. So things you can really Mm. easily outsource to a low-cost VA or hire in someone to take care of all those little bits and pieces that are distracting you, all the admin and bookkeeping and customer service, and have someone specialise in that. They're probably the two key areas that are going to move the needle the quickest for your business. When you're working with your clients, how do you help those business owners determine what their role should really be? Because like you said, you know, we're multi-talented, we can do the accounts, we can answer the customer service, we know the marketing, we know the products, but how do you help them determine what their role should be? I really like business owners to think about what they enjoy doing in their business, you know, why they got into business to begin with, and what they feel they're really good at in their business. And you actually don't have to be the key manager in your business if you really don't like doing that. Mm. So I'll work with business owners that love the creating or the doing of the technical aspects, but think that they have to stop doing that when they've got a team and manage people and then end up hating that piece. So you actually get to choose, which is really exciting and a lot of people are surprised by, but lean into what you know you're good at what you know will drive the business forward and what you enjoy doing every day. Because as you say, Susie, you want to love what you do in your business every day. And if you don't, it's not going to be sustainable. And so you can hire other people to do the other things that you don't enjoy. But what I will say that whatever the role is you hold in your business, this is still your business. You're still in charge and you need to be what we call the chief vision officer. You're in charge of what Mm -hmm. direction this bus is going in and you've got to retain that responsibility. I love that. We can't abdicate that. That is our role. Um, One of our fellow members, Tina Hay, who you may know, Mm -hmm. said to me last week, she said, I realise my role is to run the show. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do all the things. The other things someone can take care of, but no one else can run the show. I need to run the show. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be the chief manager of team, like you said, but it does mean you have to be that chief visionary officer. Is that what Mm -hmm. you called it? Yeah. Right? And so you're running the show. This is your show to run. And, but we can try and do far more than we need to and we can try doing everything. And mm. I think the answer is kind of obvious, but from your perspective, from having helped so many business owners, why do you feel it's important for entrepreneurs to avoid trying to do everything? Look, the, the truth is, whilst we're good at everything and we know we are, we're not the best at everything. There is someone better than us at lots of things in our business. And as entrepreneurial types, we tend to be really great at one area of business. And whilst we are capable and competent and can learn Mm -hmm. everything else, it's not our gift. 
For example, I should never be proofreading any content that comes out of my business. I should Give absolutely that to me. not be doing I love that. proofreading. <laughs> I will read the same page 10 times and miss the same error 10 times every time. So whilst that is something we, and I think typically too as, as entrepreneurs, we do like control. So we tend to micromanage and hold on to everything. But in doing so, it's holding our business back and it's holding us back in our growth as a mm. business owner as well. So there are certainly things that, other people are much better at. I know some entrepreneurs that come up with all the ideas, but if they had to, if we were relying on them to implement, nothing would ever happen. So they Mm. need those people around them. So it's really knowing what your strengths are, playing to those and hiring other people to support you. Mm. Earlier, you mentioned resourcing, and I just want to circle back to this idea of um, doing kind of a needs analysis Mm. on the resourcing that our business needs. Could you talk a little bit to that? Yeah, look, a resourcing needs analysis is basically an exercise that will help you to look at what resourcing you need to get to the end goal you want to get to, whether that's in the next 12 months or two years or whatever, or next month even. It's really a process of looking at what specific resources are going to help you achieve your goals. So it's just like when you secure a big project in your business, you would immediately turn your attention to, great, how are we going to deliver on this? It's the same thing with our team. It's understanding what are our goals, what resources do we need to get to those goals, what resources do we have now, and where have we got gaps. And it's really looking at what we need and what we need to then bring in to get to where we want to get to. Because if we're just on that treadmill of just working day to day, we're never going to move forward. So it is important to have those goals and objectives so that we Mm. can plan the resourcing towards them. Mm. And, you know, as small business owners, sometimes we don't have the budget to hire all the people that we need in, or that yeah. we might need. And so how do we grow into it? How do we prioritise perhaps where we put our attention first when it comes to hiring? Mm. Yeah, it's a good question. And really it's about understanding the budgets and you do need to have an understanding of the financial implications of outsourcing to a VA versus hiring internal employees mm. and I know there's a little bit of fear attached to that sometimes with some business owners when they're first hiring, mm-hmm. uh, but also looking at the the whole concept of buying back your time. When you are hiring someone that is relieving your time to continue to create or to build or to bring in new business. So it's the trade-off that you really need to understand when building that team and start small. Outsourcing is a great way to start to grow your team and grow your confidence in leading team without it feeling scary and big and, and like it's a risk to your business. But mm. too often we wait too long, like you said earlier, Susie, to hire staff. And if we had hired earlier, we would be further along than what we need to be. But you still do need to understand the finances and make sure mm. that you've, you've budgeted and you've got the profit you need to facilitate that payment. Mm. The other thing that I've noticed, and I think there was a conversation about this happening in our members group the other day, is sometimes you can think, oh, well, I don't want to risk big, so I'm just going to have a virtual person and I'm going to outsource rather than thinking I'm going to have someone in-house. And Mm -hmm. I've seen businesses that were doing high six figures, seven figures, having people on these um, low commitment kind of arrangements. Mm -hmm. Not that all outsourcing is low commitment, but they had virtual team members who were kind of free to work when they wanted, how they wanted, as long as they got the job done. That's all well and good. Mm. But it depends what your business is doing. You might be better off having one person who you hire exclusively, Mm -hmm. who is there for you five days a week, and they might be five half days than having someone, I'm not explaining this very well, Mm. but I think it's about making the commitment to what your business needs. So in the beginning, you might be going, oh, I'm going to throw a few dollars to marketing, a few to the bookkeeping, a few, but how can you bring on people so that you have a reliable team, Mm. people that are there for you? They're not trying to slot you in between five other clients because what they do is they are the outsource solution for a number of businesses. And I I truly believe in building your own team, even if you have to start small Mm. and having people that are dedicated to you, you know where, where they're going to be at any given day and what they're working on and they can be part of your team meetings and um, your larger vision. Do you have a thought on that? Yeah, look, I totally agree with you. I mean, outsourcing is great. And I think, you know, often in business, there are times when it's the perfect solution. Yes. But there is a commitment um, psychologically 
at different types of employment status. I often talk about this with casual employees. You can't Mm. expect a casual employee to give you the same commitment of permanent employees because you're not giving them that same commitment. Mm. So there's like a psychological contract involved, even though we may not realise it's happening. And I think as well, outsourcing used to be a very cheap option. It's not so cheap anymore, particularly local outsourced options. The, Mm. The local VA market in Australia is getting more and more expensive. And there are certainly situations where it's actually more cost effective to hire an employee. And you do get that commitment that you know when they're working because you've got them contracted into hours and they're invested in your business. And you've got the opportunity to really train them in your business and to have them invested in whatever your vision is as well. So a hybrid model can work brilliantly, but there's only so much you can do with a purely outsourced arrangement. Mm. I want to uh, go back to team structure. Mm. How how regularly or a better question might be, at what points should we be re-looking at our structure? Because it's not a set and forget type of thing. Absolutely not, no. Um, so I think there are a couple of key points. I think at least once a year, if you haven't, you know, for any reason had to look at it through the year, make it part of your annual planning to just have a quick look over things. It doesn't need to take a long time, but is this still the right structure to support us in the direction we're taking in the next 12 months? So I think make that part Mm. of your regular annual planning to look at your team and look at your structure. But if you are going through a period of growth or change in your business, whether it's technology change or growth of clients or new service streams or income streams, definitely take a look at your structure then because what's got you to where you are now may not serve you moving forward and if you try and retain those people or retain that structure into a new area of business or into growth it can become very challenging and it can cause a bit of tension with the team too Mm, I love that and it's just easier for months to roll into other months and years Mm. to roll into other years and then you're like well this person is not doing what they're meant to be doing but really they are it's just that what you need has changed that's right I want to um Talk to you a little bit about how you work with clients because I know that um, one of the opportunities to work with you is to have you available on an ongoing basis to support with team structures and roles and responsibilities and motivating teams. And you do that through your people-powered HR. Mm. Could you tell us just a little bit about that program and what it involves? Yeah, of course, absolutely. So People Powered HR is an online subscription service specifically to help small businesses who employ staff but aren't large enough to need or want internal HR expertise. So knowing the HR legislation, knowing how to get an employment contract together, these are all things that no business owner is ever trained to do or necessarily wants to learn either. So it's like having a HR expert on demand, so to speak, in our private Facebook community and having access to resources so you don't have to go and start from scratch every time you need a document or a policy because we have a resource library that is constantly being updated with new policies as things change or as new things are needed. There's a a go-to place that you can go and grab that and then implement it into your business. So it's a bit of a HR safety net basically and our members get advice on whatever they need. I'm having this difficult conversation with a staff member. How should I approach that? Or I need to have a, you know, I've had someone resign. What do I do next? It's all those little things that are often unexpected in business that People Powered HR helps you with. I love that. And I know a number of our members are members of your People Powered HR. We'll put a link to the details in the show notes. So if you're growing a team and you've enjoyed this conversation as much as I have, I want you to go ahead and check out the next time Christy Lee is making places available in her program. Christy Lee, you've been a member for many years. You've been a mentor for other members. You're part of our Marketing Success Mastermind program. Um, You've had big teams. You've had small teams. You had no teams. You had teams. (laughs) (laughs) I've had all the teams. (laughs) You've had all the teams. Um, How does being part of this community support you? What what would you say are the main benefits for you and your business in being part of her business? It's such a great question. I've been part of the Her Business community since way back when it was the Australian Business Women's Network, which is so many years ago now. And look, for me at the time, I'm out of Sydney. I'm a couple of hours out of Sydney and I had a new business and then had a couple of babies afterwards. So getting to any kind of event to connect with other business owners was just not logistically possible. So having that connection to other business owners who are also trying to grow businesses 
and navigating all the challenges that come with growing businesses across all the areas of business has just been so, I think it's honestly the best investment I've ever made in my business and, and myself to have the access to the network, to you, Susie, and to, you know, all of the Her Business team as mentors and support crew. I have just found truly invaluable, you know, whether it's just jumping into the resource library to uh, to the hub now to access trainings, and I've certainly watched a load of trainings from other members, um, as well as having that community around. So I've just felt like I've always found my people in this network. Thank you. And thank you for the contribution you make. I know that you work with a number of our members, helping them to grow their teams. And of course, our community is really about women actually growing businesses. And as you and I've talked about today, that takes having a team. That's a core part. Unless we get the right team in place in the right roles supporting us, it's really hard for us to have a sustainable business, one that sustains us, one that allows us to, as you reminded me earlier, allows us to do what we love every day. Mm. I'm going to ask you one final question. And as you know, our tagline is do what you love every day. What does that look like for you in your business? I love seeing other business owners grow in confidence and navigate challenges with their team. So I love being able to jump on a Voxer message when someone's having a, a challenge and workshop that through with them and seeing them really step into that role of being the boss or the CEO in their business and overcoming whether it's fear or stress or anxiety around that and really growing confidence. I love seeing small businesses grow. I'm a real advocate for small businesses and um, working with business owners to make that a reality for them is my favourite thing to do. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I've loved this conversation. We're going to put all the details so that people can contact you right in our show notes. Thank you so much, Crystalyn. Thanks, Susie. Wasn't that fantastic? Christy Lee is such an authority on building dream teams. She's working with a number of our Her Business Network members to help them grow reliable, high-performance teams. I love it when she said, I love seeing small businesses grow. I'm a real advocate for small businesses and working with business owners to make that a reality, the dream team, is my favorite thing to do. And that really shows Christy Lee. So thank you so much for joining me today. And if you are listening and you enjoyed this conversation as much as I did, then I want to encourage you to check out Christy Lee's People Powered HR program and her upcoming Power Week for Women Business Owners. So remember to check out the show notes for all those details, including Christy Lee's contact information and the Power Week details. And you'll find that info over at herbusiness.com forward slash two three, nine. Now, if you're new to the show, be sure to click subscribe so that you get all the new episodes. We have some great guests coming up. I hope you enjoyed these valuable insights into building a dream team. Um, Like I said, if you're new to the show, be sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed this episode, whether you're new or not, I would love to know. You can email me personally at podcast at herbusiness.com or you can just hop on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a rating or review. I would so appreciate it. I'll see you next time right here on the Her Business Podcast. Bye for now.